Special day for Spencer Watt. Marcos have a four-point lead. Marcus Thigpen, I would think for the rest of this ball game, might be clutching that football a little tighter. Quinton Porter on the field to begin the second half with more. Here's Sarah Orleski. Well, Rod, this has the potential, obviously, to be the biggest story of this game. So far, Kevin Glenn did not come out at the half. I spoke to the Ticats doctor who said that he is planning on coming out, and they will see at that time whether or not he's able to go back in. Here it is again, the hit. Ricky Foley, as you heard the guys in the studio, just going after the quarterback, and Glenn gets twisted. Knee hyperextended, so Quentin Porter at the helm. Maurice Mann on a quick hitter. The good news for the Tiger Cats, even though Porter has not played much this season, is that Quentin Porter has been there and done that before with this offense. He certainly isn't being someone who's being thrown into the fire here. Oh, no, Quentin Porter is a guy who started for the Hamilton Tiger Cats most of last season and actually was their starter down the stretch in 2008. The concern is that Quentin Porter's action has been so limited yeah. in this season. And the fact is there was a great opportunity to get the guy on the field last week in a game that didn't affect Hamilton in the standings. Second down and five, six receivers set Porter. Mark has the first down near the 48 yard line. And that might help shake off a little of that rust. Well, that's a throw that tells you Quinton Porter is ready to play in this football yeah. game. Stepped up through that ball with confidence. Good sign for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Good protection from the offensive line. You see the height of Porter compared to Kevin Glenn, his ability to see over the, that offensive line. First and 10 now go the Tiger Cats. Porter in trouble, Eric Taylor has him. And uh, they don't bring him down, but it is a sack. Kevin Huntley in there as well. And Quentin Porter had nowhere to go, nowhere to throw, and he ran right into number 79, Eric Taylor. Well, this pressure's coming right up the middle, Eric Taylor. Defensive tackle number 79. Gets kind of a delayed push on this play, originally blocked up well by Pete Diakowski. But the defensive guy, when that quarterback starts moving around, the defensive player gains a bit of an advantage because he can see where he's going. The offensive guy's got his back turned. He doesn't know what angle to try and get himself on. Second and 14. Porter. Right side of the field. McDaniel takes a big hit. Continues to fight. Fumble. Argos have the football. Another turnover, it looks like. And it is. Toronto Argonauts come up with their third turnover of the football game. A team that committed 15 turnovers in three games against Hamilton during the regular season. Tremendous effort from Markway McDaniel. As he was trying to lunge for that extra yard. Jason Pottinger came from behind and punched that football out. Almost hard to believe he was able to hang on to the football on the initial pop. But as he was trying to fight for the first down, Pottinger was right there. And the third turnover of the game. And there is an injured tie cat on the field. <laughs> Toronto Argonauts undefeated when they win the turnover battle. And another key tie cat is hurt. Tala on the sideline. Get an update on another injury to the Tomcats already without their quarterback. Third turnover of the game. The 11. Little pitch up to Andre Dury. Dury down the sideline. And this is an Argo team right now that has been sparked by defense and by turnovers. Well, you see the emotion from the Argo team. Watch the entire bench on the sidelines in the background as the blue, double blue wave comes flowing out onto the field after that Markway McDaniel fumble. Almost stunning this Ivor Wynn Stadium into silence here. Well, I asked Jim Barker yesterday if he was worried about his guys being too excited, too keyed up about getting into the playoffs, being here for this game. He said, I'll never try to turn down their enthusiasm. And you saw that on the sidelines. 26 Argos, 10 minutes to go for a quarter. Spencer Watt in motion. Lemon. Cross back 
back even further. Fires the straight line. Chad Owens has the football. Layout catch from Owens. Just his second reception of the day. This is a slow developing play for the Toronto Argonauts. And this is by design that Cleo Lemon is going to turn and boot back the other way. Chad Owens is just running a, a delayed out route against Shivers on the other side. Combined yardage leader in the CFL over 3,200 yards this season. Only a one yard pickup though, second and nine. Out of the backfield, Corey Boyd has room and lots of it. And if you're an Argo fan, that's what you love about Corey Boyd. Ever since he came into the CFL this season, he has been a menace to defenders because if you're going to come and hit him you might get hurt well Corey Boyd after he caught this football went into attack mode just exploded into Kyrie Zaber even Hebert had to go and tell him that was a nice shot Kyrie Zaber who is one of the most feared defenders came back to the Canadian Football League former Blue Bomber and Ottawa Renegade played with the Cincinnati Bengals the last two seasons first and ten Perfection by Jamal Johnson. Jamal Johnson does a nice job in the open field once again to make the tackle. Minimal pickup that time. The Hamilton 31 and a half yard line, second and eight. Doesn't do it a lot, but when he does, has been pretty effective. And it's important that Cleo Lemon does this to keep the defense honest. Sees a lane open to the outside, and he's got all sorts of open ground in front of him. Away he goes. Good decision made here by Cleo Lemon, using his legs to pick up the first down. Close to the red zone now, the 21-yard line. Lemon averages seven yards a carry when he does run the football. That time got eight in the first game. Takes it again. Look out. Stevie Bags with a hit from behind. And Leo Lemon had one thing on his mind. Go. It's good recognition by the linebackers led by Otis Floyd, number 35, right in the middle. Doesn't drop too far, reacts well, doesn't get his head turned. As Lemon takes that quick set. Notice Floyd's right there waiting for him. Hey. Second down here for the Argos. With a four point lead, six and a half to go, third quarter. Lemon, lots of time. Caught at the five yard line. Jermaine Copeland. And a fresh set of downs, and the Argos will go first and goal. A couple of turnovers have given the Toronto Argonauts new life in this football game. Leo Lemon going to his veteran, Jermaine Copeland. Markeith Knowlton was right there. Wasn't sure whether to go with Copeland or to stay inside. Three first downs for the Argos in the entire first half. Five already here in the third quarter. First and goal. Lemon has it. A floater inside. Picked off. Jeff Tisdale. A bad decision by Cleo Lemon. First turnover by the Argos. Every night, millions of Canadians... before. Well, we sure have Cleo Lemon in scoring position. Look back to Labor Day right here at Iverwind Stadium. A couple of interceptions. 
when they should have been looking at potential touchdowns. Leo Lemon had three picks in that game, and you see his frustration at throwing another one here. Moments ago, the throw away, Jeff Tisdale came up with the pick. Big cheers here, by the way, in Hamilton right now as Kevin Glenn re-emerged from the Ticat locker room. Here he comes, Kevin Glenn. And Clinton Porter still a quarterback. And based on the way that Kevin Glenn was running, and the fact that he's warming up now, we will see Kevin Glenn back in this ballgame. I think he'd have to have two broken legs to keep Kevin Glenn out of this football game. Leo Lemon, the interception. High Cats force their first turnover of the day. Argos with three. Unable to make it go. Quentin Porter will go to the sideline, and that might be his last series. We'll see. As the Tiger Cats will kick the football away. Keep in mind, they will have the wind in the final quarter. 4.52 to go in the third. The Tiger Cats, unfortunately, unable to capitalize on the potential shift in momentum there from the Tisdale interception. Look at the brace on his knee. Oh, and almost blocked. Eric Wilbur was knocked down and right in the car. Won't get it. Cat Owens dropped. Yannick Carter, 35-yard kick, four-yard return. Here comes Cleo back. Redemption in mind. And once again, here's Cleo Lemon's reaction after that last interception. Like a Dave, Dave Stallow right. right in his face, and that's a little bit of payback for Ricky Foley spending the first half in Kevin Glenn's face. Never a big trash talk guy, but you know what? Come on now. Come on. I'd have done the Let's same go. thing. Dave Stallow, who looks like he's all right. Cleo Lemon. After his first pick of the game. And look who's got the football. Ejiro Kowali. Normally a defensive lineman. But also plays on some of those jumbo packages. Kowali comes out, has the reception, and moves the sticks. And Kowali is going to come in motion all the way across the formation. Usually stops here to block this time, continues out into the flat to catch the pass. We actually saw Kowali catch one in the flat last week. Came up limping after the play. I'm not sure how anxious he was to catch this one. He looked pretty good, though. Kowali out there again. Now right side. First Corey Boy into the arms of Markeith Knowlton. They try to establish Corey Boyd on the ground a little more. Cleo Lemon, 15 touchdown passes in the season, 19 interceptions, 13 fumbles. Ball possession. Trouble spot for Cleo Lemon during the regular season. Second down and five yards to go. 31. Confusion in the background. Penalty flag flies downfield. Lemon is dropped, but there was a penalty flag. Spencer Watt battling on the corner with Jeff Tisdale. And this could be illegal contact or pass interference. And it looks like it's going against Hamilton. And the guy who picked off Cleo Lemon earlier. Might have been the culprit. The pass being thrown. A little contact on the receiver. Hamilton number nine. Ten yard penalty. It first is down. Jeff Tisdale. Instant first down for the Argos. Tisdale's working against Spencer Watt, and this has become a physical battle. Wow. Tisdale's Peace lucky mask. that he was just called with Ill for illegal contact. Spencer Watt, a little payback once the quarterback started running with the cut block there. Jeff Tisdale dodged a bullet on that play. And the face mask wasn't detected. Called interference. Not face mask. Boy, left side. Stevie Banks misses him. And Corey Boyd spins. 
for a first down again into the red zone again go the Argos well when you keep feeding a horse like Corey Boyd the ball eventually he's gonna break one of those what a dynamic back he is powerful Corey Boyd spots an opening and he does this well, he's such a big physical runner touch of the ball game back up tailback Dwayne Wright from Fresno State and the Argos are giving the Ticats a lot of different looks here well Wright came into the game as Corey Boyd wanted a break after the last play watch the cut right here on Jamal Johnson makes to the outside turns it in goes over top of the safety Dylan Barker 90 seconds to go for a quarter Jermaine Reed has the tackle, but there are flags everywhere. End zone, and at the 12-yard line, it's a hold against the Argos. So Dwayne Wright returns to the sideline. Corey Boyd will return to the huddle. Holding, runner number 61. 10-yard penalty, the team first down. So they'll move the Argos back. It will be first down from the 15. What a battle this has been on both sides of the ball. Should point out the Hamilton Tiger Cats' worst quarter all season. With their minus 41 has been this quarter, the third quarter. Argos are saying it's against the Cats. 